Lord forgive me for this trap shit. Sergeant Smack making backflip. Telly Hank it with the action. With the vital speaking Spanish. Frank Matthews, how I vanish. Poof. Came back like I'm King Tut. Go BBS is on a beamer. When fat cat was tearing queens up. Fall off the profit, not the re up. Fly like Puerto Rican Jesus. Uptown like I'm baby man. Just caught a touchdown. You know, going forward from California, how everything came to be. Well, see, Sosa and myself, we were all, but we all before all of that. You feel me? Right. Sosa is a day one nigga. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. And see, me, I'm the first nigga put a million dollars in his pocket. He never seen that until he came to the low. You feel me? According to the U.S. Attorney's Office, 34 suspects were indicted by grand juries, more than two dozen arrested. In court, prosecutors said those arrested were either members of or connected to an organization called the Black Mafia Family. In October of 2023, when alleged Black Mafia family member were indicted in St. Louis, it would reveal the depths of the organization's ties within the city. More than a TV show could ever explain, allegations would surface about the crew and the boss to show that the ties might be deeper than anybody would ever know. You want me to show you how to pull up some paperwork? So, you're talking about Tammy Cowens, right? Yeah, yeah, Tammy Cowens. Okay, now... She, she's a co-producer of the BMF Stars TV show. Okay, and, and you're saying that she's an informant? Definitely, 100%. Okay. She's been in informant since 2009. It says, uh, you know, United States of America versus plaintiff, and it says, uh, Donnie Gatlin. Dion Gatlin. Dion Gatlin. Shout out Dion Cuff. Gatlin. Shout out Cuff. That's my nigga Cuff. Dion Gatlin. Yeah, he's the one of the first defendants, yeah. Okay. St. Louis Project, nigga. What's happening? During season three, Episode 7 of the Star's blockbuster show, BMF, Little Meech, portraying his father, Big Meech, would experience rivalry problems in Atlanta and would decide to travel to St. Louis in order to expand his operation. The show is said to be loosely based on the truth, but exactly how loose is it? Like many others, I would stumble across an interview several months ago that will force me to think about that even more. On top of that, it made me wonder if they even had the right to sell the script. So I will begin searching for more answers. I'm trying to reach the owners of Chop Talk TV. Yeah, this is him. This is the owner, Morocco. How you doing, brother? Hey, what's going on, Ace? Um, not sure if you're familiar with me, but I'm popular. I run a web series called Mob Ties, and I stumbled across your channel with an interview and I wanted to see if I could call you and get more clarity on that interview. Oh uh, yeah, 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 most definitely, man. Yeah, I know who you are, man. <laughs> Mob yeah, that's what's up, man. Your, your channel is dope, bro. I'll keep it up. <laughs> I appreciate that. I appreciate that, Ace. The story I want to talk to you is about a guy named Cuff from St. Louis. Are you familiar with that story? Uh, I want to try to get a little bit more clarity on that yeah. video that that crazy video that shook the internet that's on your channel. Uh, yeah, uh, Cuffy. Yeah, Cuffy, uh, yeah, he's from the projects, man. He, he a legend in the city, man. He, he really, like, he one of them guys, man. Like, one of them dudes where it, it's almost like he, he an urban legend. He almost like a ghost, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people know him, but a lot of people don't know him. And his name just... It just rained through the city, you know what I'm saying? Oh, okay. But that, inter that interview uh, right there was uh, was actually given to me by one of his closest people. And uh, they told me just to hold on to it. They was just like, man, just hold on to this, man. And just, I so you drop it at a certain time. So you had it more than even the six months ago or so that you dropped it? Yeah. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. I had it way before then. Yeah, I just, I just never put it out. You know what I'm saying? I just put it in the cut and just waited on, waiting on them to tell me when the, 
when to drop it. If you had to guesstimate a time frame that you had it, because it's new now that everybody talking about it. How long ago yeah. did you know about this, or was it floating man, around? I, that was shit, man. Probably like almost. A year and a half, almost two years, bro. Before, you know, I was around when things was, you know, kind of started going bad. And uh, Pops got me with uh, another writer who was a guy who used to be the former editor of Rolling Stone. He was trying to get us, you know, to put the whole story together and all that. And at the same time, I ran into a familiar person. I was put with this woman named Tammy Cowens. Tammy was communicating with me regarding, you know, her position, trying to help. They basically said, Cal, help Tammy. And because they knew that at the time, Tammy, you know, she didn't know shit. She was just a pretty girl. Right. Now, let me tell you what I know that was weird. Tammy was communicating with me, communicating, communicating. She was telling me everything was going on. And then one day she came back. Stop. One day she disappeared. Right. She right. ghosted me. And I could never right. figure it out. And I'm going to tell you something. The first time I met her, I met her in person at the Intercontinental in Buckhead. And she uh -huh. she came across very striking, but it was something I couldn't put my finger on. Because I was like, how does this type of woman get involved with these ghetto niggas? What the fuck? Is, you know, I, I, couldn't, I right. couldn't figure it out because she seemed so out of place. You know what I'm saying? Right, but right, at the time, right. I didn't question it. I just did what I was asked to do, which was to look out for the, the, the family. So I was looking out, trying to connect with her. I was dealing with Tony at the time. They were trying to do their little BMF wives shit. And long story right. short, Pops, I held Pops down, Wayne down the entire time he was out in jail, uh, took care of some things for him. So when he came home, you know, we had already been writing on the story based on Pop's perspective and involvement. And then he put me with Sosa and Sosa blew my head off because no one in the organization, no one around could tell me about the old school shit. All I could tell me is about, you know, going forth from California, how everything came to be. Well, see, Sosa and myself, we were all, we all before all of that. You feel me? Right. Sosa is a day one nigga. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. And see, me, I'm the first nigga put a million dollars in his pocket. He never seen that till he came to the loop. You feel me? I heard he about you, dog. That. I heard you was just an oh, outstanding yeah, dude, yeah. man. Take care of your business and your reputation in a good way preceded itself. So I understand now based on from what we've dealt with and seen with this whole thing with Tammy, man. Speak on that for me if you can because... Is perplexing. Well, what they did, what Meech and Tammy did is called it because you're not in the system. Thank God you're not. I, like, I hate to see brothers in this system. But brothers who are familiar with this system, it's a nasty, nasty system. What Meech and Tammy did was called a third-party cooperation. What happened was... This call is from a federal prison. Originally, I was put with Tammy. I paid for the script. I put out, I paid a quarter million dollars. That's my script. That's why 50, when he came in, because we, we put a, a assistant deceased order in through my attorney. That's why they couldn't do a motion picture. That's why you didn't see the BMF story on the, on the big screen. So 50 ran and do that star shit that he ran that other corny shit he, that he do. So what happened was, homie, was I wasn't even the original target. They wanted to get a little Mexican. He's actually a cartel member out of LA named Suarez. You'll see his name in the paperwork, Fidel Suarez. He was the initial target. You feel me? Right. He was the initial target. But with me calling in while they were trying to set up Fidel Suarez, she clicked over and told the Fed or the agents who was listening to her and Suarez, hold on, this is Cuff. And when they heard the name Cuff, they went fucking crazy. And that's when, when, when her and Meech turned the scheme toward me. You feel me? So what it did, what it did was, it, this was what it was supposed to do. It was supposed to give Meech a time cut for her cooperation and set me up. But also, it kills two birds with one stone. It puts me in jail, and now they don't have to split any of the revenue with me. My buddy and my partner along with me was named, his name is Louis Burrell. That's MC Hammer's big brother. That's who Tammy was coming out here to see. There you, that's, that, that, that was me. That and that was, that was and I'm gonna tell you, and I'm gonna tell you the year. That, that was 2015. No, that was like 14. Yeah, way early than that. It started way early than that. Way Let's early see. than that. Around 2010, homie. Way early than that. I'm sorry. So yeah, we gotta go way back. We, 
Yeah, we we put we put fifty million dollars on the table through Lions Lionsgate Films through Lewis Burrell's Connect uh, because Lewis is that uh, nigga he a bait nigga out there, but he he fucks around he really fucks around in the music tip, but he also fucks around in the movie industry up there. Now what we did not know was why Tammy would turn down that deal with me and Lewis Burrell get twenty percent of, of, of of that budget. You understand what I'm saying for a finder's fee. So what ended up happening was we didn't know that they had other plans and that she was sleeping with the feds and that and and and, and that they would put me off in prison and run away with my script and don't have to give me anything. So it, it, it was supposed to give me a time cut and knock me out of my percentage, me and Louis Burrell out of our percentage for the finder's fee with Louis with, with Lionsgate's film. But Lionsgate, when Lewis went so, so they backed orders. Lionsgate did, shot it down when Lewis Burrell was no, no longer a part of it. You feel me? Right. So, Tammy's whole thing fell apart. Meach couldn't get a time cut because they found out Tammy has no, she has no credibility. Because when you can't have a relationship with a federal agent, now you have no credibility. So they thing blew up. They things fell all the way apart and blew up. That's why Meach didn't get a, get a time cut. But Tammy testified in open court that she signed up to be a DA informant to give Demetrius Flannery a time cut. This call is from a federal prison. Finally arrested my dad and we received the discovery. He knew exactly who CS1 was. And he told me and my mom that it was Tammy Cohen's. At that time, we really did not want to believe. We wanted to give Meech the benefit of the doubt. Um, it was really, really hard to believe that Meech would set my dad up. It was almost unbelievable. Um, so we we were able to like reach out, um, get a message to Meech, and basically let him know that Tammy was an informant. <clears throat> We later received a message from him saying that it had to be a misunderstanding. Um, just call her. She'll straighten this out. Um, so on, so on. Now, do y'all remember that feeling that y'all first got when you found out that wrestling was not real? I'm not saying that that's the case here, but after talking to Cuffy, it definitely made me want to see what y'all thought. We all know about BMF and its ties to the city of St. Louis, with J. Bo being the second in command behind Big Meech. But with an organization that big, you have to know that there was other big dogs, and one of those are said to be Dion Cuffy Gatlin, having shared a more than 20-year friendship dating back to the early days of BMF and allegedly being the first person to put a million dollars in Big Meech's hands. During our conversation, Cuffy would even go on to tell me that they sat at each other's family's dinner tables. Now, the friendship would get complicated in 2014 after Cuffy and his organization would be indicted due to information obtained by Atlanta DEA agents on a wiretap from back in 2012. The information was allegedly obtained in a conversation between a person listed as CS number one and Big Meech with the supposed target of the wiretap being a Mexican cartel member by the name of Miguel Suarez. Now, the bottom line of the situation is that Cuffy would allegedly call into the line of CS1, putting the feds on his trail. After being indicted and receiving his discovery paperwork for the government's case against him, Cuffy would determine that CS number one was none other than BMF associate producer, Tammy Cowan. And this is where the situation even gets trickier because that's where sexual scandals, third party cooperation, and even federal hearings would come into play. And it would start with a DEA agent by the name of Keith Cromer, who would allegedly have an affair with CS1 a person that many people believe to be Tammy Cowens. Now, that situation would escalate to the point to where Keith Krumer, one of the original investigators of the BMF operation in Atlanta, would end up pleading the fifth during a misconduct hearing where he was allegedly said to have provided CS1 
or Tammy Cowens with over $200,000 in federal funding, with some of that funding allegedly including extravagant dates and lavish vacations. Now, after that information would come out, CS1 or Tammy Cowens would allegedly be deemed as an unreliable informant due to her relationship with the DEA agent, ending any potential third-party cooperation deals that Big Meech was allegedly a part of. It would also be in light of that information where Cuffy's situation would become more complicated. Now, due to statements made by his co-defendant, he would end up pleading guilty in 2019 to various conspiracy and gun charges. He would appeal his guilty plea to the Supreme Court, forcing them to provide an alleged firearm that was supposedly tied to two murders in his case due to the statements by his co-defendant. During the interview referenced earlier on Chop Talk TV, Cuffey would reference the United States vs. Anderson case as being similar to his, but when I would speak to him personally, he would reference another case, the United States vs. Laura, with some people saying that Big Meech could be released as early as next year, and with Cuffey's case being currently on appeal status, as more information comes out, this situation will definitely get more interesting. But what I definitely need to know is y'all thoughts on this situation. It's very complicated as it involves third party snitching, but I definitely need any of our legal experts with any information on that or anything close to the situation to get in the comment box and help explain it some. It definitely seems like a lot of people have mixed feelings about this situation in particular, with some taking the stance that nah, Big Meech would never do that. And with others taking a, it wouldn't be surprising and more like, damn, not him too stance. But how y'all feel about it? After the years of seeing guys like Nicky Barnes and Alpo and even Craig Pettis, who Big Meech would chastise for snitching, go on to snitch. Is Meech one of the last of the line to keep that code or does this situation seem funny? Y'all make sure y'all hit the red bell and subscribe button right under this video so y'all know when this real trill spill shit is dropping. Y'all get in the comment box below. Y'all let me know what cities we need to go to, what stories we need to tell, what we missed, what we got wrong, all of that. Y'all tapping with me directly on Instagram, Twitter, P-O-P underscore A underscore L-O-T. And until the next play, y'all know how we rocking. Shades pop a lot. Salute the almighty mob.